Hello and welcome to another episode of Test and Speak, and uh, I'm your host Vijesh Bey. With me on the screen is uh, my good friend Sham Sashi from uh, Singapore, and uh, he's been a big inspiration. He's I've been following his work for for some time, and uh, this is our first meeting online. Uh, if if I'm not wrong, face to face. Uh, this is our first meeting. It is a uh, a strange thing that 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 despite knowing each other for such a long time, we are meeting here for the first time. Now, Sham, uh, uh, he is an automation expert. I have been inspired by his work. He's he's been going to uh, you know many conferences, doing a lot of talks. He's shared pictures of of all the batches from various conferences, and that's a big motivation for me. And not just that, that the talks that he gives, okay, the topics that he chooses, the the cool things that he has been doing, uh, that is extremely inspiring. He uh, is very humble, as always. Uh, you know, replied or responded to, with the calmest possible demeanor. So uh, I, I can just go on talking about Sham for a long, long time, but. It, <laughs> This episode is about Siam, so welcome Siam, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Prajesh. Uh, I'm so humbled. Thanks for inviting me for this interview. <laughs> well, uh, see, just look at him. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he's he's um, so cool that he's just uh, you know keeps it very calm even now. So Siam, Siam. <laughs> uh, I have been following your work for for some time now, so okay. um, I'm sure the audience will also be intrigued mm -hmm. to know a little more about you. So, could you share uh, insights of your journey as a tester so far? Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, I'm into testing space for almost ten years now. So. After my graduation, uh, I got a campus placement, uh, but there was some delay in calling. So they called us uh, almost after eight months. So I, I didn't have to do anything for these eight months. Then uh, I was trying for some part-time jobs or something like that. Then I, okay, I didn't start as a tester. So I started as a game programmer. So I started, yeah, uh, I started in a small company back in uh, back at Cochin, uh, where I started uh, doing the flash. Flash was dying, but it was not dying at that situation. So yeah. somewhere in between. So I got this opportunity. So uh, I found it quite interesting. So I took up. Uh, then my plan was just uh, maybe if I didn't like it, then anyway I have the other offer. Then maybe the time they when they call you can always join. Uh, yeah, then I thought like, uh, I worked there for almost six to eight months. Then finally my friends were joining in the other company. I joined USD Global back at uh, Trivandrum. Uh, they put me into Java. So this is not your choices, right? So when you join as a fresher, yeah, yeah. then it's just like a random selection. Uh, but I already got a taste of how uh, it's supposed to be at work. Like, like, uh, let's say we all do the lab session at colleges, right? So that's the one question that you are getting. Like, so write a program. That's it. So the only thing you care about get the output, right? There is no further questions. Most of the time, uh, the instructor will not be asking you to change the program, or what if if you could avoid one for loop, nothing like that. If you get the output, that's it. So uh, my first company actually uh, it really helped me to change this kind of stuff. Like from the first day itself, uh, I mean, back in when I do the flash programming, then I had the chance to interact with the client on the first day. So my client uh, was from US. So uh, we have been developing a game, game for him. So it's like, when you think about, okay, you have done the next day, okay, what if we could add this? So it was keep on coming in and I kind of uh, quite fascinated with all this kind of stuff, like, because this is the first time we are into that, right? Yeah. And also, it's I'm quite fortunate that I'm getting this kind of experience in the first day itself. 
So, uh, but I couldn't continue there. So I moved to uh, UST after eight months. Uh, I started as a uh, Java programmer. Uh, but the project I got actually, it was almost over. It was more kind of a maintenance phase. So there was not so much active development. Uh, I was working like a support role there. I need to call to US and uh, check uh, why you are facing this issue and uh, just help them on that one. But um, I was missing the development part. Also, I needed to do some smart kind of uh, testing over there. Uh, because the project almost over. Even I was working as a shadow resource, okay. And uh, <laughs> uh, and it was like uh, some once in a while you need to uh, execute some of these uh, test cases. That's the only thing other than the making the call. That's that's the only thing I need to do. Uh, then this was quite repetitive. That's the first time I have tried Selenium. So I have tried Selenium RC, not even a web driver. Mm -hmm. So uh, I bought a book then uh, uh, Evil Tester. So that's the first book, Evil Tester. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's the first book that I am, I am buying. I'm buying a testing uh, testing book. Then uh, I try to learn Selenium RC by myself and uh, try to uh, automate this, uh, some of these uh, manual test cases. You, I know you don't like to uh, hear the minor no, 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 one, no. but uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, absolutely fine. I mean, it is all context driven, right? Really. Yeah. yeah. So um, I tried to order because this was quite boring. So I needed to do, uh, I needed to do this testing. I mean, this is a fixed number of test cases. So management was asking, okay, whether this one pass, 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 pass. Then instead of doing it, uh, manually executing it, then then let's say let's uh, do it with some scripting. So that's the first uh, introduction that uh, I have got uh, into the automation testing. Um, then, like I said, the project was not so much interesting. Then I already got a taste of uh, automated testing. Then I was thinking about uh, moving. After two years, then I had a chance to uh, work with Oracle after some time. Then I joined Oracle. Uh, then, yeah, then I moved to uh, Cognizant after a couple of years. Then Cognizant to Singapore. Yeah, that's my overall journey look like. Well, that's uh, that's quite interesting. And I still remember the good old days of, of Flash games. <laughs> And uh, suddenly you're playing and uh, if you've not updated Flash, then yeah. you stop and, and you would have challenges. So from an from end user perspective, that was always uh, this challenge. And then we saw Flash phasing out and then, uh, you know, going away. Especially those, those, those Flash games were quite interesting. They always required. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah so but. I understand that. And it's quite interesting that that you started uh, your reading habits with Evil Tester. Now, I I, I, I want to uh, talk about that and I want to talk about uh, automation, okay? So you, you, mm -hmm. you mentioned uh, that, that you bought a book, Evil Tester, and uh, started reading and then, uh, you know, you... So what are the other books that you've read so far that have, that have inspired you or... Uh... Um. Uh, basically, uh, how Google test software, that's one book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the recently, uh, the, uh, I mean, it's not, not really in the books. So it's a collection of articles. So beautiful testing. So it's a, basically, it's a collection of, uh, all the multiple articles that published on the internet and the publishing people. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is, uh, some of these, uh, things that you mentioned, I'm going to put them on the description. Of of this yep. because uh, we want testers to understand the resources from which mm -hmm. sure, uh, sure. which we are learning and uh, yep. when people watch this interview and they're curious yep. uh, you know then obviously they can go to those resources and refer to it and I'm sure that uh, you know they will find something helpful mm. those are sure why not yeah that's one thing. Now coming to Selenium, and you you mentioned that back in the day you started with Selenium RC. Yeah. Uh, that was some fun, I know. 
And so how have you seen the selenium space evolve? Now, mm -hmm. I know and uh, I must tell my audience that Shyam has been mm -hmm. featuring regularly in the Selenium Conf year after year. He's been doing a fantastic job. You can uh, read a lot more about his stuff. You can see his stuff already. So how have you seen Selenium evolve over the past few uh, years? And what is your thought on the on yeah. the right now? Yeah, uh, the main thing uh, what I would like to highlight is the stability. So basically, if you look at the RC, then RC, you need to uh, start a server. And uh, if you look at the interfaces, there were no web drivers. And uh, the maintaining, especially running it on multiple browsers, uh, it, it was quite tricky. Then uh, the exceptions that you are getting, uh, the, like the stale element and other stuff, it was quite uh, high. And if you if you look at the current architecture also, let's say if you want to build a custom uh, framework from Selenium Web Driver, quite easy. So then, uh, I mean, you could you you could say that let's say uh, uh, from an architecture point of view, the current uh, the, the the current interfaces and the other Selenium Web Driver latest one is quite helping a lot to implement with all the object oriented concepts. Okay, cool. So, so what do you think about uh, about projects like Test Project, which are actually built on top of Selenium, yeah. which yeah. which give you a, a stronger uh, uh, playing field? If if you if, if I if I may use that, that you know you mm -hmm. could do a lot more experimentation, customization of your framework, and uh, you can create yeah. your own add-ons and things like that. What do you think? What is your uh, it's all it's all depends on uh, your requirement what you really want to achieve in your in your current project so uh, let's say um, uh, let's say i have i have worked with multiple uh, multiple test project and each project actually you cannot apply the same architecture into the same same project so basically you just need to customize uh, customize the code based on your needs the requirement might be different for the test automation from project to project. So in that sense, actually quite important that you should know how to do this, how to customize it, how to do the coding for your needs. Well, that, that is a very interesting remark, uh, Shyam, because, uh, you know, people are looking for solutions all the time. And, and uh, yeah. I have seen uh, some people just trying to follow what's, what's being done by somebody. Mm, trying, yeah. to, trying to sort of copy a framework and, and, and not try and do much experimentation. Now, yeah. I, I, I feel that this is a very important statement that you've made that yeah. it's supposed to be based on what you want to achieve. Yes. It, it cannot be that one same solution works for every, everybody. Yeah. And yeah. this applies to any kind of automation that you do. Now, that brings me to my, my, my next question. When we talk about in sprint automation, mm. you know, uh, trying to achieve automation in the same sprint. Okay. What are your thoughts on it? I mean, uh, do you think it's it's something which is <coughs> feasible, or do you think it's uh, too much mm. to ask for? Mm. I think it's possible, but let's say before we conclude that, you need to check some other fact whether. Do you have the right tools to do it? Do you have the correct infrastructure to do it? Do you have the enough bandwidth to do it? Do you have the support from the team? So if all these things matter, then it's possible. Let's say you still, uh, let's say, if you don't have a dedicated environment to run the automated test, then where are you going to run that one? And if it is not stable, also, you don't have a proper communication with the dev team and the dev team is not aware of you're going to achieve this one and there is no accessibility ID, there is no support from the dev team. You need to get the bills from them and you need to automate that one. So all these things matter, right? So also it quite challenging to say you can complete this within the end, within the same sprint of the process with the development and uh, let's say n is quite tough i would say n minus one so the idea should be like we should be automating along with uh, before we ship the project 
that's what something we could achieve so within the same sprint let's say if you if your sprint is 5 days and uh, i mean let's say 4 days it takes to development and let's say you, if you're going to start automating this i mean you are getting the build with the initial screen after the fourth day how it's possible so you need to consider all these parameters so you need to have a wait with the team let's say this is what we trying to achieve so make it possible outcome so that i would say rather than we tell on okay we will do the automation within the same sprint so let's say apart from what we trying to achieve are we going to finish it before we ship it to the production are we what's the objective here so are we going to reduce the uh, manual effort or are we going to find out some issues from the automation to what's your original goal here so you need to define that one and you need to get the proper infrastructure infrastructure and the resources for that yeah you you uh, that, that that is a very comprehensive uh, response from your side now you uh, mentioned something uh, that you need support from the team okay so when you yeah. say that, yeah. when yeah. you say that what team are you referring to are you referring to development are you referring to uh, you know your product owner architects who are you referring to everyone <laughs> <laughs> so let's say let's say i can tell that let's say Uh, so the team should be aware aware of that one let's say uh, we going to automate this uh, feature within the same sprint or in the next sprint so team should be aware that we need to put some effort okay there is this this much effort the test engineer need to put in order to automate this one okay and people should be knowing that these are the features i mean we have selected these are the maybe the positive flows you going to automate only the positive flows okay and we need to make sure that the positive flows works fine from the automation everyone need to agree on that uh, let's say uh, these are the test cases that we may be automating okay and which uh, let's say when it comes to you to automation let's say on which layer you going to automate is it going to be ui side is it going to be service side is it going to be unit testing so if it is a unit testing let's say uh, let's say we can have a check with the developers okay so we have this test case okay i think we should be automating it and uh, i think it will be too expensive if you do it in the ui side so is it possible to automate it on the unit testing side so you can have all this communication with the development team and uh, get it done so the product owner should be aware of that one yeah so product owner should be aware so you can always get a review from the product owner and uh, let's say these are the automated test cases that we are working on it does it make sense so product owner al- can always give you some feedback especially let's say if you are using the behavior driven development and you have all the scenarios in advance so you are already having a communication with the team the team is in endlessly aware of all these uh, test cases because you already shared with them and they already know if you are running an xml mapping workshop so quite easy to say that they since they are already aware of these are the scenarios that belongs to this particular feature and out of these scenarios we going to automate on which layer so quite easy so this communication should be happening also let's say from technical point of view let's say if it's a mobile application you need to get the build the apk or ipa so the team should be the development team should be giving you the build right they will be they should have a uh, ca support and uh, maybe they should be giving a nightly build so start somewhere so that the test engineer can use it some help from the devops team if you are not managing the devops team so this is all interrelated so the thing is that you need to set a clear goal and vision and you need to work as a team to achieve it so it's not like the test engineer is going to do it as a single source of action i uh, mean it will not be working like that way this is a this is a very important message from you sham because uh, i tried to address this in one of the recent conferences that i spoke that you know with automation there is my experience i have seen some of the teams trying to achieve it as a silo activity mm-hmm. so it is a group of uh, automation engineers they are going to work on this task and uh, and normally the concept that people tend to follow is okay you have a bunch of test cases which have been written already convert them into automation and then yeah. go to the customer as as the amount of productivity uh, there was a recent conversation in the test chat group as well about mm-hmm. this being the mindset somebody had asked okay so how do i show my productivity in terms of converting number of manual test cases into 
into automation test cases or test groups. Like, for example, they have 1,000 or 10,000 test cases. And so if they are able to convert everything, is it 100% coverage? Okay, so I, I, I find that discussion a little upsetting because that's wrong, in, in my opinion. That is a wrong notion of what automation is all about. And you use the absolutely correct word that when you are trying to automate, you need to know what is the layer at which you are automating. You know, yep. are you doing it at UI layer? Are you doing it at the services layer where you, know, you have all your APIs? Or are you doing it at the, at the unit testing level? And wherever you are doing, the rest of the team, you know, your fellow testers, your developers, your architects, your product owners, your stakeholders should be aware of what is going on. Yep. yep. Okay. So, so that there, you know, and, and what you need for that is a simple thing called collaboration. Yes. You know, we, 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 we forget such a simple thing. We need to be talking to these people. You know, uh, interestingly, there is a statistic that I had shared in, in the, you know, in, in one of the conferences that I spoke uh, from the World Quality Report, this which came out this year, and World Quality Report, there was a survey done, and 1,750 leaders from different sectors were interviewed, and they were asked questions about automation, and 80% of them said that it requires more collaboration mm. between uh, uh, for 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 automation, you know, and which means that people know that, that there are things that are going wrong and they need to fix. You mentioned a very good point on that. And, and, and I, I want the testing community, if you're listening to this interview, to take this as a key takeaway and go back to your projects tomorrow. When you go back and start working on, on, on your automation projects, think about the areas in which you can collaborate. Because what it will do is it will reduce so much of waste for you. There are a lot of test cases which are, uh, there are there, there are a lot of attempt in automation where you know you are trying to automate unnecessary things, which are not necessary. For example, if there is a if there is a test, for example, mm -hmm. which, uh, which which verifies whether two plus two equals to four or not, do you think okay. automation of that makes sense? <laughs> no. <laughs> so. <laughs> So things like that. I mean, this, this was just a weird example, maybe, but you know, small things, small, very trivial things, which do not require your investment in automating, yeah, need not be automated. Yeah. So uh, going a little further on this subject, when mm -hmm. you say uh, test or automate in the right layer, mm -hmm. now, do you see it more chat because you know. Uh, when people start talking about automation, the general trend that I have seen, and you correct me if I'm wrong, is that people start thinking of automating first in the UI layer and then possibly going mm. further in the application. Mm. Do you think that is the right approach of thinking or do they should look at the application more holistically? You know, I think um, automating UI layer is quite, I mean, everyone can start if you're into new into automation. Maybe, maybe that's the reason why everyone start starts thinking about the UI layer. That that's make I make the guess. Uh, but let's say you can do. Okay, let's say you can you can also argue that let's say what if uh, I do a lot of service layer automation and nothing works on the UI. Okay, so so you need to find the right balance between these two. Right? Yeah. So basically what I would say, let's say you need to classify, you need to, you need to select your test cases in such a way that what makes sense for the UI and what, what it makes more suitable for the service layer. Uh, I could say one example, like, let's say there is a uh, sort, there is a search page with the sorting options. Okay. So there are around 20, 25 sorting options here. And let's say, does it make sense to add all the sorting uh, UI test cases? I would say no. So what about the multiple combinations of the UI? So, I mean, you can get 25 factorial combinations, right? I mean, maybe more than that. So do you really need to automate all these combinations on the UI? So I would say no, it's expensive and it, it's very brittle. It can break 
I mean, with a single change, slides of code change, it can break. So you identify what are the important test cases that we could do with our UI set and move almost every other test cases into the service and the unit testing is every day. That, that I would, but it's not easy because when you tell this to the management, you're gonna get a lot of uh, feedback. Say, oh, well, I know our customers don't use it, but you just need to convince them that should be your job. Uh, coming, uh, telling about that, let's say, I've been talking to one of the testers, then the feedback I got, I got like, as a tester, our job is to please others. This is one of the feedback that yeah. I have received. Yeah, <laughs> I was, I was quite. It's from one of the speakers. I don't want to tell the name. Uh, so, but I'm quite surprised to know that no, our job shouldn't be please others. Okay, our show job should increase the overall quality. You don't need yeah. if you're gonna work like you're gonna please others, and it never going to end. <laughs> well, it depends on who you are pleasing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna agree that let's say yeah we will do everything on the UI yeah you can but who gonna maintaining that one and who gonna does your team has the capacity to take care of all this thing? I have been interviewing one person so quite impressive resume and impressive skills okay and um, so I just ask this question so how many automated tests are in your team right now okay and so he said. Uh, we have 15,000 UA tests right now. We are managing 15K. They're running it daily, okay? And it takes almost eight hours to complete. Oh okay. my God, okay. And then uh, I was like, okay, uh, then let's say how many of them are failing? Okay. He said, uh, yeah, around 2,000 tests are, I mean, 2,000, okay, yeah, that's 90% of you have more than 90% past rate. Uh, okay, that makes sense. So, so how do you how do you check why these two thousand tests are failing everything? Yeah, we don't check. Uh, is it? Yeah. I mean, then how does it work? I mean, uh, we check it once in a week only. Uh, then, uh, then, which means that you need to check ten thousand, almost ten thousand, more than ten thousand failing tests on a weekend, right? <laughs> uh, no, no, it's not like that because the, this testing, the failed ones, most of them is going to be same. Huh? Uh, yeah, then I ask him, okay, if it is keep on failing, why don't you use it? Just throw it away. Then he said, yeah, that's a good solution. I am amazed that, uh, you know, uh, people are uh, going that route. And, and, and uh, I mean, in my honest opinion, Cham, this is, this is, this is a very shallow thought process around automation. Yes. You know, uh, it needs, it needs a lot more education now. Okay. So if I am in a situation where I've got say, um, I've got a lot of tests, how do I choose which ones do I automate? What, what would be the process for you to choose which one to automate, which one not to automate? Hmm. How will you go about it? Okay. So basically what you can, again, the communication is the key. So basically you can check with you the product owner or other team member that say, we have this much test cases. You can classify this based on P0, P1, P2, P3, <clears throat> sorry. So basically you can have a check with them and let's say, this is what we can try to automate. Let's say, this is what make, uh, this is what we need to see. The automation, means that this is the same test case that we need to execute in some other point of time, maybe every day or once in a week. So what with the automation, what we are trying to do is just minimizing that effort, minimizing that manual effort. That's what the way automation means. Okay. And let's say uh, when you select a test case to automate, what do you really need to look at? What's the return for that one? If you are if you are automating it, what's the value that it's giving? So it's a, it's a that much really important one. So you can classify based on the priorities and uh, you can share with the team. So basically before you start working on it, you can you can classify those test cases and you can have a check with the team. Those, this is what we think, okay. I think uh, we should be automating this scenario. Okay, I don't mind to call it test case, like a related scenario. And this is the this is the requirement that I would like to uh, automate. So 
you can get a feedback from them on most of the time you, you will be right because you have been working with the team from the requirements so you already aware of that one this is the this is this is an important one this is the one that gives us the most benefit so just classify with that rather than picking up a random one and for the sake of we automated this one saying that let's have this conversation and this is what we trying to do and this is what trying to automate once you do that when well, let's say everyone in the team understands that okay we have covered this one of course you cannot cover everything but whatever you do you need just need to make sure that these are the high end critical priority items because yeah. it's so fancy to say you can finish the automation within within the spring but depends what if there are a lot of and you don't have enough bandwidth to do that what are you going to do so you need to always get aware with the team okay these are the these are the scenarios that we will be automating because these are the scenarios that going to benefit to me absolutely absolutely to 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 <coughs> to come to that conclusion that these are the scenarios you need to automate you need to have those conversations with developers with architects with yeah. yeah everybody else now we have spoken about automating tests okay i don't say automating test cases automating mm-hmm. trying to automate tests or or checks you know there are yeah, the, yeah. there are different discussions that that yeah, happen yeah, yeah. okay so um, we we can talk about that at length uh, when <laughs> that discussion will go in some other direction but i want to uh, talk to you about some other benefits of automation okay it it just need not be for test case execution yeah, right automation yes this automation can be one of the most useful or one of the most beneficial use cases for automation for me is test data generation yeah uh, because because sometimes i need to have uh, you know 10000 records or or a million records and how do i generate that mm. i i can you know try and create an excel sheet try and you know drag it drag columns and randomize and right yeah even then i will still have to write a program to generate you know random data i still have yeah. to program it and yeah. i would still call it automation right it could of be of course yes it could be something Every, right everything now. you could do with a small line of code is an automation absolutely yes yeah. even if you write a macro uh, small macro and i i spoke to you about a 2 plus 2 example yeah calculation of 2 plus 2 equals to four using that uh, and this was this was highlighted by by our good friend somya mukherji in one of the conference mm-hmm. talks he did recently okay. that if you are doing a 2 plus 2 in excel and and using the formula you are yeah. and doing that's also automation actually uh, agree yeah i agree <laughs> yeah so so uh, so what is your perspective what what are the other use cases that you think that somebody could uh, you do for automation um i mean you can you can really think about uh, beyond uh, automating it on the ui so let's say you can build your own tools okay that i would say which helps the testing so i mean my mindset my set also was like that i didn't have a mentor for the initial career or for the initial years of my career and i was thinking like okay automation is selenium okay i didn't think anything beyond selenium when i heard about uh, automated testing i mean the first one who gave me a spark when i attended the interview at oracle okay so the interviewer asked asked me uh, this question like so so why why do you want to automate i mean why why, why do you want to do it I mean, why makes you so special about automation so it's told like say i am good at selenium okay and uh, i can i can do quite well in selenium so he asked me what if there is no selenium tomorrow what are you going to do okay then i was thinking like okay that's a good question <laughs> uh, then then basically he told me like so it's not about any tool okay it's about what you really trying to do so it's about all your all your in all your knowledge and how you can apply to increase the quality so it need not be uh, with respect to the ui or any other automated testing you could build tools you could build the tools to help the team to improve the quality so the first i mean the 
inspiration that I have received from Oracle is was very high. I, I started to build the tools when I joined Oracle. So uh, we had this small project called Oracle Pod Update. So quite, that was one of the uh, funniest projects where uh, you need to work continuously. I mean, not continuously, uh, there is shift, but most of the work will happen on Saturday and Sunday only. Because the customer will be going uh, all home by Friday evening. When they come back on Monday morning, uh, they are called, there is an Oracle instance. So need to be upgraded. So you need to, there is an on-site team at US and here at India also there is an option. So we will take the shift and uh, we it just need to continuously run some commands and we just need to analyze the log and check everything is correct. And let's say uh, the port, you do some smoke testing and check whether it's fine. The problem is this is all happening in a terminal, okay? So there is no log, nothing. And uh, the only way to ensure it's working correctly, checking the log. So you need to download the log and you need to go through the content and you need to look for some specific stuff and just to ensure that it's working fine. So on the first first day, the log analysis is taking too much time. On the second day, I created a small tool which will check the download the uh, log file and check verify everything. And you can easily customize it for all the all the ports and I shared with the team. Okay. So this is automation. This is this is we are we are checking, we are verifying the content of the log. Okay. And as a quality engineer, I, am, I was so glad that I, I was able to do it because I was the only quality engineer who picked up for this project. And the only thing you, you just need to do, uh, just run commands and check the logs, okay? That's the only thing required. Everything will be happening in the background. So, I I mean, I was really happy uh, to do something like that. That's something I wanted to do. I wanted to do something beyond Selenium. So, the happiness that I have received was uh, quite high. Then the next uh, moment that I had got in terms of uh, automation is something a relative expert helper. So this is something that happened uh, when I worked with uh, the Singapore uh, government technology, so uh, GovTech. So uh, we had a web team where they didn't uh, create any of the identifier. So basically, I think it, it is Appian. That's the name of the uh, tool that they are using. Basically, you can create some custom website, but they don't have any control over ad adding unique identifiers. Okay. Oh, okay. So the first I check with them. Okay, well, we need to automate some of the some of the data. There is no unique identifiers here. So uh, can you help them? They said, uh, sorry, we don't have any control over it. Then uh, CSS, uh, CSS selectors and the expert were the only option. And uh, the team was manually just writing the expat all there. Then uh, that's where I come up with a simple Java console where it's a, basically it's a Java U, 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 uh, J, uh, GUI where you can inspect the elements and it will give you the relative expat uh, expression. And then after everyone started using that one, I thought, why not we just release it for everyone? Then I created the Chrome extension and I put it in the Chrome Web Store. So if you look at that also an automation, I mean, finding out relative expert helper, I mean, that's automation helps testing. And uh, you, can, you can do a lot of things like that. So basically you can think of what you could do be beyond the test automation and you could create the tools which help you to reduce the efforts on the test automation. There is endless possibilities out there. Yeah, uh, that, that's a very good uh, thing that you have mentioned. Uh, so uh, you're going to share that, that, that link of your, your Chrome extension with me and then I'll uh, sure, 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 put sure. it in the description of the yeah, yeah. video so that others can benefit from that. So these yeah. are some of the very interesting uh, things that you can do. I mean, you're absolutely right. You can build tools to make people's lives easy. And when we say build tools, it does not mean that you have to be a developer. Let's get all of us. Of course. As a tester, as long as you are helping in making people's lives easy by developing some small tools, utilities, you're absolutely there. Now, uh, going a little further, 
and and your love for selenium uh, you've been talking in selenium conf for a long time that's been one uh, one two two times two times not two times only one time one time only i attended for the first time then no you last last you've, last... you've been there in selenium conf yeah 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 you've yeah. uh, <laughs> spoken maybe once because yeah. i've seen a lot of badges of of of, of your participation okay uh, and you you put out a I think you 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 put a picture of of all the batches that you've collected. So yes. You put it on LinkedIn or, or 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 on Twitter, and that is the image that I have in my mind. So why okay. do you think uh, it is important for testers to go to these mm. conferences? Yeah, yeah. So, okay, basically, I will tell you why I started started attending the conferences. Uh, there are uh, mainly two reasons. Okay, so. Uh, me, frankly, uh, never thought of uh, any of these conferences before I visiting uh, Singapore. So when I when I started working with the GovTech, uh, they had this option. So they they just formed a, a team, quality engineering team at the time when I joined, and they used to send their folks to uh, different uh, quality engineering conferences across the world. Okay. So once they went to, I think uh, they went to, um, I forget which conference it was in the US. Uh, I forget which, which conference was it, but they uh, went there and came back and they shared about what they have learned from the conferences. So basically it's like five or six people uh, went to conference and this Six people actually attended multiple multiple uh, speaks and multiple multiple workshops. Okay, and once they came back, they started to share what they have learned. Okay, and and we also got a chance to attend that one. I, I was a vendor there. I was working with uh, Cognizant. Uh, they invited us also to the meeting, and they started sharing about what they have learned. I mean that was an amazing experience. I mean, then only I came to know that, okay, if you go to the, I mean, it's much better than reading it, reading a lot and watching YouTube channels. So, because you, you, you are hearing something from a real person and it makes a lot of difference. And the, also you can pick up uh, which speech you would like to hear based on your needs. Let's say it's something if not interesting, you can pick up another track, which will, give you immediate benefit in your career or your project. So I thought like, yeah, that's a great, op great option, but I was quite sad because I, did, I don't have this opportunity because the client actually sent their folks, uh, not me, because we were working as a vendor, right? And then I uh, joined Carousel, then Carousel had this, uh, I mean, Carousel was in the very beginner stage of startup life where and they used to send their folks to different conferences. Then I thought like, yeah, I mean, I mean, that's one of the reason why I choose Carousel when I got the offer. So it's like, uh, you can select any conference with the well and you can go. And they will give you with uh, two, three days of leave also. So quite uh, amazing, amazing day. Then uh, I went to the Selenium conference for the first time. And uh, the if you, if you look at attending conferences, like I mean, uh, uh, this time the Selenium conference was virtual, but I would say the real world conferences that I would say, you are meeting a lot of new people, okay? Yes. So you are talking to them and uh, you are, I mean, you, two things you are doing, you are listening to the speech and you are talking to the people. It, they may not be a speaker, but they are just there to attend it. But their views, I mean, you can talk about anything related to quality engineering and uh, the perspectives that you are getting, actually, it's very valuable. So you can you can pick up a random person also if they would like to find. And the amount of knowledge that you're going to get within these two, three days is amazing. It really worth the money if you are, if you are paying by yourself. I have gone to, I have gone to conferences, which is, paid by company and paid by myself, okay? I mean, I'm quite sad that we cannot go to any of the conferences this year, mm -hmm. and, but I'm really looking forward to go, go to more conferences. 
so the basically uh, what i more like to highlight uh, this is the information gaining and what the information which means you will be getting something which you can apply in your project that's the main thing about the conferences and of course you will be getting what is called the future of testing most of these topics which going to address there it's going to be the next level of what you supposed to do you will be always ahead of time if you are writing all this i mean it's okay yeah, or almost all the conference will be uploading their videos after after a couple of weeks but the feel and the experience that you going to get when you attend it over there it's going to be i think i have read it in linkedin i think it was written by pradeep i don't know which pradeep but it's like watching uh, cricket on tv and watching cricket in a stadium correct so so that's the if you want to get that feel where you watch a match in a stadium you should be going to the conferences yeah yeah absolutely i i can't, <coughs> i can't um, agree with you more on this this particular thing because uh, this year you know uh, i have been a part of six, seven or eight conferences okay all of them all of them of course virtual sitting at home yeah. sitting at this very place okay i have been a part of eight different conferences some where where i spoke some where i was just a participant and uh, still it was a wonderful experience yeah but you know actually going there okay actually being at the venue actually pe- meeting people face to face okay being able to say hello to some of yeah the people you f- you follow and you are like uh, you know you really really want to meet and yeah that, yeah, that a- excitement part <laughs> yeah that is a different experience and i'll tell you this uh, okay um one such one, one of one such uh, persons i met is our friend abhijit oh okay i yeah. met abhijit face to face at global testing retreat 2017 yeah. in pune mm-hmm. okay ever since that day we've been pals and and we've been talking about a lot of subjects we've uh, you know he's 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 a part of the test chat and and he was the one who actually got me interested in thinking about a community setup okay although okay. that testing alliance existed but there is a, there was always you know takila the yeah. wonderful uh, meetup that you guys have i i love the i love the name of course oh abi abi named it <laughs> <laughs> i uh, i mean i just love that name now and and uh, for the for the listeners i wanted to say that you know um, behind setting up the test chat community takila has been a great inspiration okay because Thank you. Uh, i have been attending the events the webinars that you guys do or uh, you know you had a series of lightning talks i think in uh, uh, may or june this year that was june i think it was june or july somewhere that uh, i think september september yeah somewhere there okay somewhere yeah, uh, yeah. okay in the, in the second half of the year yeah. let's put it that way <laughs> <laughs> I, i have i have been a part of so many conferences that i forget okay and and uh i don't know if if the guests or uh, if the audiences audience of this uh, video know that the journey of the test chat community being community partners of various events began with the the takila lightning talks Takila Lightning Talks was the first event that we were uh, invited to be community partners, and thanks to you, thanks to uh, Abi, you know. Yeah. Uh, so you know this 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 very thing about conferences, about meetups, about being able to you know um, meet new people, learn new things. share your knowledge share your experience you know learn from others experiences it's you it's huge and, and and it is you know the passion that you have the passion that abhi has uh, and the passion that many others have that is one big driving factor for me 
it's it's a huge inspiration for me and 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 that's how because 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 of one of your your talks or your one of your articles i started following okay you you, you did a webinar or something like that i i don't remember it was quite some time back a few years back you spoke something and, and i was like wow this guy is cool and then i i i realized that you and abhi were colleagues and and i was like okay so this is from where it is coming and then i started uh, reading more about you and i was like this is a nice guy to follow so that's how you get it right you you yeah. you know you know what uh, i came to know abhi from his presentation okay i mean the the speech that he has made uh, i think that's the first time i am sending a connection linkedin connection request to abhi and i started following him and after 6 months i asked him okay would you like to join the course <laughs> yeah so see this is this, this is this is how cool uh, it is now um so for the listeners especially for those who are who are new in testing i mean one of the best ways for you guys to learn forget about you being new even if you have been there in the industry for some time one of the best ways for you guys to learn is to participate in conferences yeah. meetups workshops okay now you have the advantage that a lot of them happen where you don't have to spend uh, a lot of money you can attend from home that is an option yeah. right now thanks to the virus even though you know we love attending conferences face to face like like sham said that it's a totally different experience watching a match on tv versus watching a match in the stadium and and and, and uh, i would prefer watching it in the stadium <laughs> but it's not always possible because it costs you a lot of money okay unless somebody is sponsoring your ticket <laughs> let's <laughs> let's be very practical here also. <laughs> but then uh, you know all said and done what i mean to say is that attend these conferences okay uh, talk to your employers you know talk to your bosses express your interest that, that is something that you want to do okay because i'm sure they go to a lot of conferences they yeah. they go to a lot of conferences why can't you go to a lot of conferences i i asked this question once to my manager <laughs> i have asked this i have asked this that i wanted to go to a conference uh and and i i asked this the first question that came to me was who's bearing the cost yeah okay so that is that is the question that came to me and uh, fortunately at that point of time i had reasonable amount of money with me okay in the is it okay if i go then uh, they were quite kind they said no no don't worry we will bear the cost hmm. because sometimes it happens okay they will ask you questions like this who's going to bear the cost because obviously you want to do this uh, you know obviously they want to keep a check on the on the cost and things like that so they will ask you these questions but i have also seen like you said a lot of companies mentioning now in the job description that when they talk about the company and the benefits that you will be getting they mention that you know you have the opportunity of uh, attending multiple conferences and yeah our our teams go to so so that is that is a nice perk of joining a lot of teams So, uh, look for those books also <laughs> to the audience. Uh, I mean, let's say uh, uh, okay. So, I mean, oh, one of my other reason why I started attending conference because I like to travel. Okay, that's another reason why I started speaking at the conferences. Let's say uh, if you have a cool topic to speak, and you, if you think this is worth sharing, other people are. Uh, gonna get something out of it then you should definitely uh, start attending the abstract to various conferences i mean doesn't mean one conference committee uh, approves your abstract doesn't means that another one gonna accept it okay but let's say if they accept it you definitely gonna get free flight ticket free accommodation basically this means that the travel opportunity also there i mean pre covid situation Well, yeah, hopefully yeah, this will I, be I, back <laughs> see, see there, there are different aspects to this um, so first first step is you know take a step submit your abstract don't worry about it getting accepted yeah. or not yeah okay yeah. let's let's not get too caught up in in 
saying, oh, it's, I feel bad, my, call, my this thing was not accepted. Like you said, somebody may accept it, somebody may, may not accept it. I mean, people may have their different standards, but, but that experience is worth yeah. it. When you know that, okay, you have to next time put in something really extra to get the attention. Maybe mm. it is something that was missing in your, in your topic. That yeah. most mo most of the time they will give you feedback on what you're really missing missing in the abstract. You can collect all this feedback and you can create a better one next time. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And and then uh, you know, like, like you said, there are conferences which give you free 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 tickets. Things like that. So that is that's 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 another perk. Okay, there are conferences which say no, you travel is yours, accommodation is ours. So there are yeah. different arrangements. And there are conferences where travel is also yours, accommodation is also yours, but it but never mind. That experience yeah. is also yours. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Excuse me. So um, so uh, you know, attend conferences, attend meetups, attend workshops. Okay, meet new people, learn from them. Yeah. So this is the, this yeah. is this is the message that we are trying to give. Now it brings me to a fun section. Uh, yeah. I'm going to ask you five questions rapid fire, Sam. Okay, and you have five seconds to answer each question. In case of multiple choice, you will also have to say the reason why. Okay. The first one is a very easy multiple choice question. Mm -hmm. Kerala or Singapore? Kerala. Why? <laughs> I haven't seen any beautiful places in Kerala. <laughs> but it's like home, it's home. We're never going to get to another place other than home. <laughs> Nothing better than home. Yeah. All right. uh, so, uh, the climate of both Kerala and Singapore are almost similar. Yeah, almost, uh, almost similar, yes. Almost similar. So, uh, if you were if in, in post COVID era, mm -hmm. if you were to get out of, of Singapore and go somewhere, mm -hmm. what place would it be? Home again, Kerala. Still the same weather? <laughs> <laughs> because it's been almost 20 years since I have gone home. So the first place gonna, I'm going to pick up will be home. How many, uh, uh, how much time that you've gone? One year, one, one year. One year, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's a quite huge time because I used to travel uh, every every six months. Or oh, Last year, you know, I have traveled almost every month. My wife was pregnant and she was at home. Then I used to, I mean, it's, it's just only four hours journey from Singapore. So it's like when I was working at Trivandrum, then I used to take, uh, if, I, if I was in train, then I used to take almost seven hours to reach home. If I'm flying from Singapore, I can reach home in six hours. <laughs> so, and the uh, private flight tickets are not so much expensive. So I used to, I used to travel like, uh, if it's a whole public holiday on Monday, I used to travel at Friday night and I used to return back to Singapore Tuesday morning. Cool. It was easy less than, but you should see the airport right now. So empty chairs. <laughs> well, of course, I can, I, I can of course imagine. But um, so, uh, my next question to you: uh, yeah. life now uh, uh, as a father or mm -hmm. life earlier? Now. Why? <laughs> I mean, it's a, it, it, it's, it's not a surprising question, right? I mean, let's say, I mean, uh, none of us know how the fatherhood look, look, analyze you have a, you have a son or daughter, right? So it's so amazing. Every day it's, uh, I mean, it's like a small level of happiness injecting to you at every minute. And that's a feeling I would like to describe. So, yes. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, first of all, uh, it, it's been, I think, 18 months. Uh, yeah, 18 months, yes, yes. Yeah, so, so congratulations on, on that one. Thank you. Uh, for me also, it's, it's, it's been 30 months, just a year, okay. more than more. Than <laughs> and uh, like you said, I mean, it, it is a fun experience, okay? It is something that, that you, you are not sure about, and then once you get into it, you're like, Wow, there are surprises. <laughs> <laughs> so for me also, uh, it, it happened in 2018, you know, similar thing. My wife okay. was in India and I was traveling almost not every month, every two months. 
uh, I was traveling and I would travel for for a week, not okay. for, not not on a Friday and come back on a Tuesday. But <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll travel on one Saturday and then come back the next Sunday or something like that. Okay, okay. Like that, I I, I did, and uh, because the distance is a little yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yes, yeah. and the airfare is also bigger. Yeah, but then uh, that was cool. And uh, parenthood, of course, is it, it changes dynamics, and it gives you that that happiness that you are looking for. Well, so uh, that brings me to my my next question for you. Uh, you <laughs> okay? If you are asked that okay, attend a conference, mm-hmm. or you are given free tickets to an IPL match in a stadium, which one would you prefer? Mm-hmm. A conference, <laughs> because I am not that much a cricket fan. That for the first thing. Let the next one. Uh, I'm not sure the time which I'm gonna invest in IPL with respect to the conference going to get that much benefit. <laughs> It'll a conference will make you a better tester, but how? how <laughs> a conference will not make you a better cricketer. <laughs> Sorry, an IPL match. Yeah, maybe yeah. IPL. We are not a cricketer, so. <laughs> All right, and, and, and the last and the last question is very very simple. What's your favorite food? Food. Ah, okay. I like the Kerala dishes most. So the breakfast, uh, you know, put. Oh yes. Have you heard of? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The. The put with the my, my curry is my. Ah, oh, really? Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, then you you should be you have no choice. <laughs> you should not taste it. Yes. Yeah, that, that's my favorite dish. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, that's that's nice. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, thank you for sharing those. Thank you for uh, making me stumped in a few places. <laughs> I, I I I get a few of those. It's nice to see people coming up with surprising responses to what I have uh, thought. And these questions are all all on on the go. These are not like preset questions that I have. Okay. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Inviting me. I think this is uh, first time so somebody is inviting me. One last question before way. I let you go, uh, Sham. One okay. final question. The question mm-hmm. is: What does Sham like to do when he's not mm-hmm. testing? no testing um basically i play with my kid said one thing then i like to run so started to run in this year so that's something i really like enjoying so like, how enjoying many, right now. so how many nursery rhymes have you learned so far oh nursery rhymes i think uh, oh, more than 10 you know what see I, sometimes uh, i mean when you see uh, the the animation most of the time you are hearing the voices only you are, you are hearing the audio clips only there sometimes you watch it on youtube oh this is how it look like on the screen <laughs> that's a feeling that i have got every time <laughs> but i quite quite that's something i have learned this year a lot of days are right oh oh I, i will tell you something okay my entire youtube playlist has changed ah, yeah it was full of testing videos okay okay testing videos it would be testing videos it would be documentaries from national geographic about uh-huh. was biggest or whatever okay some yeah. some, some uh, national geographic animal videos it would be documentaries mm-hmm. watching and I, i i am a huge fan of aeroplanes okay so i i i would be watching okay the making of a boeing 777 or 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 the a380 and such videos i used to watch and my playlist yeah. was full of all those but now yeah. it's all youtube video and it is <coughs> all nursery rhymes okay yeah. nothing i i have I have noticed it, especially the Takila YouTube account. Then I started seeing the Nelson Rhymes on the Takila. Then immediately I disabled the history and search options. <laughs> okay, and and you know, um, so when I do this and I record my interviews and and, and it pops up on the TV screen, um, my son will look at that. You know, these the interview recordings. My son will look at the screenshot and he will say, "Nay." <laughs> wants he wants his nursery rhyme to play. <laughs> he doesn't want me to watch anything else. Yeah, it's quite funny. It ha- it happens. Yeah, it, it's quite funny. So he calls the shots 
on 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 YouTube uh, whenever YouTube is playing on my TV screen, but yeah, most of the time it is. And uh, I have mastered at least twenty nursery rhymes. Okay, I yeah. know how to sing, and uh, you know, still he he does not prefer me singing, which is good. Yeah. Which, how did you how, how did you manage when the Google outrage happened? When the YouTube was not working. Well, uh, fortunately, that was in the afternoon hours for us. Ah, okay. And, okay. and my son was sleeping, so oh, wow. you you escaped, man. <laughs> so I, I had a lucky, I had a really lucky escape. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but then uh, for the rest of the world, it was a kind of a, you know, the lesser we speak, the better it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyways, thank you so much for your time today, Sham. It was it was awesome talking to you, and uh, like I have been saying to a lot of my different you know previous guests, uh, there is a lot more to talk to you about. Uh, the time was limited, but uh, we will speak soon again. We might do a chapter two, and there are okay. things that that we can do together. So, uh, you know, I've, we've started a new series with. Uh, the test chat group called the TTC webinar and so we would like to invite you as guests to one of our webinar series and see you know what we can learn from you so so uh, the greater uh, testing community should be able to take advantage of of your knowledge your experience thank you so much for your time it was awesome talking to you you've been Once again thank you you've been a huge inspiration to me and uh, so Thank you. Keep inspiring me with all the cool things that you've been doing, and uh, you know, enjoy the weekend. Okay, same to you. Uh, it's morning, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Prajesh. Bye bye. Bye.